Welcome back. Well, we have a very special guest this morning, Olsen Filipana. He was an absolute trailblazer for the Polynesian community. He joins us now. He was known as the Galloping Garbo. It is so good to have him on. What a personality he has. Olsen, welcome. Thanks very much, Aaron. Yeah, like I said, the galloping days are over. Now I'm more like closer to a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still working as a garbage man. Yeah, that's right. I just stay, I drive the truck now, so that's more or less what my, my wheelchair uh, seven days a week. It was quite common in the old days, wasn't it, I think Because players used to get a lot of fitness out of uh, doing the runs. I know Tucker Coleman always uh, was on the Garbo run. It was quite common for rugby league players to do it. Yeah, that's right, Brad. You know, you, you, you know, forget about the bear, uh, O'Reilly, Bobby O'Reilly for Parramatta. And all that, you know, it was on the garbage. And, uh, yeah, like I said, it was, well, you know, I basically had to take it up because I was uh, sort of like 25 stone when I arrived there. Do people still recognise you when you do it? Yeah, they do all the time, but they're a lot older now. And, uh, <laughs> just like I am. <laughs> They're in wheelchairs as well. Aren't we, aren't we all? <laughs> no, thank God they're not in wheelchairs. But, you know, I, I get some some kids come out and they, they talk to me, you know, and even uh, guys that are about in their 30s say, you don't remember me. And I go, no, you know, I've played league. I've probably got brain damage. I don't know. I said, well, <laughs> you asked me when I was seven in the hospital. And I go, oh, what? You know, how am I supposed to remember things like that? <laughs> you came across from, from New Zealand in uh, 1980 and uh, went to the Balmain Club. You struggled early on. Can you tell us about the homesickness when you first arrived? Yeah, that was a big part of uh, me coming here is, is the homesickness because, you know, because we're such a closely knit family, uh, the Polynesians and all that, and to come over here in Australia all by myself and not knowing anyone at all, you know, it, was, it was very hard for me. I, I had no one to talk to, no one I could, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, that could help me through what I was going through. What about your experience with racism? And you've spoken about that quite publicly as well. What was that like for you in the early days? <laughs> yeah, it was all new to me. I, you know, as you probably would have read in the book, Aaron, you know, it's, it's something I've never come across and never been called before. But, you know, I, I get used to it. And like I, I said, I, I get tempted to... Uh, get tempted to, you know beat someone up, but, you know, it's not, it's not going to do me any good and, and the game and my family. You promised your mum, I think, that you, you would never yeah, fight back it. physically, so instead you channelled your anger into tackles and hit-ups and that kind of thing. Yeah, I, uh, instead of using my fist there, I used my body, and this is why I, I said earlier, you know, more or less like in the wheelchair here driving the truck, garbage truck. Well, there was one place you used your body was in test matches for the Kiwis against the Australian sides. What about those battles and the rivalries with Wally Lewis during the 80s? What were they like? Oh, they were great. You know, I, I heard so much about Wally Lewis and everything else and the reporters had told me when I got picked from reserve grade, you know, uh, what are your chances like? And they more or less had to take the phone off the hook, Brad, because they kept on ringing me. You know, what are you going to do? And <laughs> I come back, none of you, you know... The reason why I took it off the off the hook because it was none of their business. You know, I was playing against Wally, and I'll sort that out when it you know when the test series come around. Well, speaking of Wally Lewis, uh, he joins us now. Wally, have you still got those stud marks down the, the front of the chest there? No, I still have, Sterlo, and I'm, uh, I can tell you that uh, I spent that much time on my back. I'm an expert at being able to tell you all about the sun, how quickly it moves over the top of the ground, the uh, the star rotation. That man uh, that we're looking at, Olsen Filipano, uh, uh, I didn't know much about him when I first came up against him, but I knew plenty uh, by the time that the 80 minutes was up, and one of those was not wanting to play against him again, I can tell you that. <laughs> it must have been hard from your point of view, Wal, because, you know, like Olsen said, at one stage you come out of reserve grade, you know, and all of a sudden you get to the game and there's this bloke over there just, you know, running over the top of you. You don't know much about him. How hard was it for you to play against Olsen? Oh, well, mate, it was just um, his determination that uh, was the, the most impressive feature. And I've got to say, um, you know, uh, it was just impossible not to be impressed by his uh, super performance and the pride that he displayed every time he wore the uh, the black jersey. Um, there was only one bloke that I got to dislike, and uh, uh, it, it certainly wasn't Olsen. It was actually Graham Lowe, uh, because Lowe told me a little bit later, he said, uh, mate, 
um, I was a little bit upset. I didn't think Olsen, uh, you know, was was ready for the game. So I might have told him that yeah, you called him right. a few extra things uh, <laughs> prior to kickoff. I said, "What did you do that for?" He said, "To get him to play the game that he just did when he ran over the top of you." He said, "I'll be telling him each and every match now to do the same thing." So. <laughs> What about on the field? Was there any sledging or any banter on the field said between you two? Um, Alter's probably better uh, to, to, to answer that one. I, I, I don't yeah, recall yeah. that. <laughs> you know, like, when, when Molly and I come, uh, you know, come up against each other, you know, it was more or less the, fi the, the five eights that supposed to look normal five eights. We Wally threw that out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the two, two, you know, Two five eights have weighed over 100 kilos. So, you know, and they, so everyone was sort of like, you can't be serious about these two blokes being, playing five eight. But, you know, that, that, that test series w was great because uh, you now you had the two of the, two of the best five eights that were going around on that era. And uh, to come up against Wally was, you know, one of the, my greatest, um, you know, uh, test series ever because he was. You know, such a, a great bloke when I was watching him in the State of Origin series and couldn't understand why the New South Wales supporters, when I watched the game, was calling him Wally the Wank. I go, what is the state hate oh, so 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 much. I think I'm it was Banker. 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 Yeah. Banker. Banker or yeah. somebody else. It's Banker. Yeah. Banker. 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 Now, obviously, because there's more nations playing, and we see, you know, there's Tonga and there's a few other nations playing. But how do you see the rivalry? Is it the same now between Australia and New Zealand as it was during the 80s? Well, well yeah, I well, probably you... think it's it's just dropped off a, a little bit. Um, uh, if, if it was up to me, I'd be making sure that Australia and New Zealand clash uh, basically uh, every year, an annual uh, 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 occasion to... Uh, uh, to test uh, their skills on the field uh, would be a, a great idea. I know the clubs basically own the players now, but the pride that was attached uh, to an Australia v New Zealand test match, mm. whether it was played in Australia or New Zealand, was at an all-time high. And I'm sure that's exactly why Olsen and uh, me and, and our teammates uh, felt so uh, so proud about representing our country. Uh, you just felt 10 foot tall and bulletproof every time you went onto the field. Yeah, exactly right. You know, that, that 85 series... You know, people will never forget because of, uh, you know, over in New Zealand, it was all the All Blacks, but that 85 series more or less took the front page. Yeah. Oh, it's great stuff. Uh, and it's New been, Zealand. Yeah, it's been so good having you on. Also, Wally, we'll let you go. Thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. I'm sure you guys yeah. will want to catch up for a beer at some stage and <laughs> yeah, that's right, <laughs> tell yeah. old war stories. I've, 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 he, owes me, he owes me a drink, so, you know, I look forward to catching up with you, Wally, when you let me in the water. Don't worry, I'll see you as a small <laughs> one. <laughs> There's another thing I owe you, oh, Austin. Right. There's a couple of stud marks that uh, I've still got in my head from that game that we played against you. I've if you've still got it in your head, I'll pull them out while I'm out there. <laughs> <laughs> I could just watch you two. It's like those Muppets. The two just there. It's so good. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And, and Austin, the Thank reason you, that we've Wally. got you on it... Uh, as well as you being a great bloke and a legend of our game, you've got a new book, which is awesome. And I've actually, I've been sent this and I'm about halfway through now, The Big O. It is an incredible story and it's a must read. It's just, you know, you deserved more coverage back in the day and this just tells your story beautifully. So congratulations, it's The Big O. It's available in all bookstores across the country, on the website, everywhere you want to go, you'll find it there. It's a great story and a great read. Congratulations. Thanks, Alison. Cheers. Thank you, mate. Thanks very much, Sharon, Brad. Peter and Lockie, thanks very much for having me. Thanks You're a good mate. man. Thank He's you so, man. so much. OK, thanks don't go anywhere because... On, the hey, <laughs> did you just call Olsen Tilifana and Wally Lewis Muppets? <laughs> I think, you know those two that sit uh, up in the... Waldorf um... and Statler. Yeah. Yeah. Quite the Asian You called them Muppets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two no, <not laughs> two all-time legend greats. <laughs> no, just the, basically the shot on the well, screen of them both together. <laughs> Yeah, we're being called worse names. <laughs> yes, yes. So have I, Olsen. So have I. Don't worry. Take care. Thanks, we'll guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Jared. I think you should join him for a beer. Yeah, you? maybe. I'll go join him for a beer. Absolutely. I haven't had enough of that good in a long time. OK. Jerno's next.